common complaint which you are facing in our clinic. It is very common and usually misdiagnosed or misinterpreted. Why is this before happening? And we have many causes and during the coming videos we have multiple videos we will discuss cause by cause and how to manage them. The first one which I like to stress about it, it is what we call punctal stenosis. And from my point of view it is responsible for 70% of the causes of epiphora or lacrimation. Why punctal stenosis happen? Uh, it is usually following to chronic lead inflammation like chronic blepharitis. Sometimes the chronic use of typical eye drops with the preservative and the preservative is responsible of toxicity of the punctum and causing inflammation and obstruction. Sometimes it is calling um, uh, underusing of the punctum in case of ectropion or nasolacrimal duct obstruction. Then the punctum is not used properly and at this time it is narrowed or obstructed. So there are different causes which are responsible for um, stenotic or stenosis of the punctum. And understanding the, what is going on, we can put the plan. Uh, it is very important to examine the punctum and to see how the punctum looks like. It is not just obstructed or stenotic we have to know what's going behind why it is stenotic and how to manage it uh, i'm classifying I, i'm this is my classification i'm classifying punctal stenosis into three main types first is anatomical or true punctal stenosis or typical punctal stenosis and you can see in the video here the, the punctum is stenotic or narrowed and it is mainly there is a tissues which uh, uh, encroaching over the punctum and it is totally obstructed. The second cause which I call inflammatory punctal stenosis, it is my terminology and it is very common. Maybe 60-70% of the punctal stenosis is due inflammatory and mostly this is the one following use, chronic use of uh, eye drops, uh, post cataract, post lasik or sometimes chronic uh, blepharitis. It is very common and you easy here the punctum is uh, hyper and congested. It is not like the other one. The other one refers to true punctal stenosis. The tissues are quiet but encroaching, but here they are inflammatory. Sometimes the, uh, it is following what we call supposed inflammatory. Sometimes after the inflammation uh, uh, quietened, we find the punctum is stenotic again, and this is mostly with, uh, when the stenosis is long time and starts to uh, quiet, and after quietness, it transforms from the inflammatory punctal stenosis to a, a true punctal stenosis. So, inflammatory punctal stenosis, mostly it is an intermediate stage between uh, open punctum to starting to be stenotic and hyperemic to true punctal stenosis. Uh, I am concentrating here on something very new, maybe no one hear about it or how to manage it. I am the one uh, doing this many years. It is very effective and we call it management of inflammatory punctal stenosis. How we manage inflammatory punctal stenosis? For, for treatment, we are following these steps. First, you prepare xylocaine, which are using an insulin searing, a few millimeters of xylocaine, and I'm preparing in a cord 40 milligram, and this will be injected uh, some punctum. So I have local anesthetic and the topical anesthetic we'll see now, and the steroid uh, intermediate or long acting. And then I keep bring a piece of cotton and I, I soak it with uh, alkane or topical surface anesthetic eye drops. And this will be placed just, you can, you can see here in the picture, we are putting uh, uh, topical anesthesia. Then we are putting the small piece of cotton bud just below the punctum and it is soaked in the uh, topical anesthesia also. So the piece of cotton bud soaked with the topical anesthesia and placed close to the area of injection. This is very important step because this is very painful technique. And if you follow the same instructions which I'm putting here, it will be totally painful. It'd be painless. Put topical anesthesia, but surface anesthesia, topical anesthesia alone will not sedate the earth's area. But putting this bledge or this uh, small piece of cotton soaked with alkane and leave it in the infrapunctal area for five minutes, and then you remove it, everything will be perfect, and you can inject here smoothly. So this step is crucial to proceed in your technique. Otherwise, you cannot inject. It will be very painful. It's very bad experience to the patient. After five minutes, we remove this cotton piece and then inject the local anesthesia. You just inject one or two uh, marks in the local anesthesia. So injecting this anesthesia will not be painful because you are sedating the surface. Inject the local anesthesia for the deep sedation and then you inject half. I have 40 millimeter. Usually inject 20 millimeter infrapunctal in each eye. This is after diagnosis of the inflammatory punctal stenosis. Well, the punctum is stenotic, hyperemic, and the um, I don't know why this is stenotic or hyperemic, but mostly I see them after either chronic use of eye drops, post lasik or post cataract or whatever, or chronic blepharitis. Doing surgery in such cases is very annoying. So you don't have 
other treatment other than quieting this area by injecting of infrapunctal steroids and it is very effective, very uh, beneficial and it gives marvelous treatment and to avoid surgery, which if you did it here, you will make things worse. Here you can see I am injecting the steroid infrapunctum, 20 milligram here and 20 milligram the other eye and you leave the patient for one or two months. You have here in the picture here you can see chronic blephritis which is responsible for inflammation, redness at the lead margin and this is go back, go, keep going, going, going until the punctum and the punctum will be inflamed and obstructed. And uh, in the second day, you, the patient will be, the lead will be hyperemic, will be uh, edematous, but tell the patient don't worry for one, two days, there will be lead edema. You can do this, in, I'm doing this in the clinic, anyone can do it, it is, doesn't need subspeciality, but after two weeks, you can see the punctum here started to uh, open, started to see the opening of the punctum, and the two weeks more, the opening of the punctum and the whitening of the tissues around the punctum started to appear and the, and the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the area in, is healing and getting much, much better. So it is very important to use it.